Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons-Garthway. Hi guys, I'm Carla Garrick. Ah, it's been a long week for us. Um, this past weekend, uh, Carla and I were both at the Doubletree in Nashua um, for the New Hampshire Liberty Forum, which is an annual conference that's put on um, in conjunction with the Free State Project, and that's where it started. Um, I think it's morphed a little over the years. I think it used to be more to show people they didn't have to be afraid of winter. <laughs> and then now it's become just more of a liberty-centric conference of ideas. Let's go with that. Yeah, I mean, it was fantastic. First of all, a huge shout out to Miss Tammy. And Marion. Marion and Marion Ward, who is not on the show, so I can't shout her out, but uh, for doing a phenomenal job, yeah. really, at organizing it. It felt really buzzy. Yeah. We had an incredible lineup. I got my favorite photo ever with Tulsi Gabbard, who's really quite a... It was um, good. Um, Tulsi's speech, I mean, I, I knew it would be really good, um, you know, because it's not really a political conference, but a political... I don't think it's bad to have a little bit of a political edge to it, right. you know, because politics is what make, drives legislation, which drives change, which, you know, is all these things. So she, um, she's got a new book coming out. Don't ask me what the name of it is because that's how slow my brain is. Oh, um, I had the flyer, but I don't but think But it I comes out, it I think, oh. April 1st, something like that. Um, and it's about why she left the Democrat Party. Basically, that was the answer, like, saving America, why I left the Democrat Party. You know, and she's a lieutenant colonel, She's a lieutenant colonel in the, in the Army National Reserves. And... and so, so, you know, she, I feel like, has the stripes yeah. from all sides yep. to, to make a cogent argument for why maybe, like, we need to all take a deep breath yeah. and kind of figure so things out. So she was really good. Um, Glenn Jacobs, who was also Amazing. Kane in WWE, um, did a great Wrestling, speech like on that. Saturday. He is the mayor of Knox County, Tennessee, and he was talking about coming into office at the beginning of COVID, right. basically, and how to how we had to juggle all that. Um, and that county, just for folks, uh, I mean, I was surprised. It's huge. It's like it's nine half million, a million Half a million. Okay, 500,000 people. So that's like half the size of New Hampshire. Right. Uh, where it's a mayor sort of managing stuff, yeah. right? So that was sort of interesting to hear how he had to navigate yeah. the, uh, you know, health and human services, who actually has the power to make yeah. diktats that would influence everyone's livelihoods, yeah. meaning your actual life, right? So that is one of those things with COVID that so needs to be said, it was right? Good. Um, there were some, I mean, there were all sorts of panels and topics, um, we had a gentleman, Titus Gebel from Monaco, come and talk about um, free, cities. free cities and connecting like different groups all over the world that are all with the same type of goals. Um, mm, smart people who are yeah. like, gee, you guys built something interesting. Yeah, How well, can we is, leverage your you know, hard work I, my for secret, us? My secret <laughs> on speakers is always if I don't know what you're talking about, like if I literally am like, I have no idea what they're talking about. There's a probably a good speaker because if I, if I know then I've probably heard it before. So right. people want to hear things they new things, things right. are not as like proto-natalism, which I didn't right, pro which is I, I didn't know uh, what which that is was. about why it's important for people to have children because like South Korea, they're they're I think it's South Korea, their numbers are dwindling so drastically their population won't be able to sustain well, itself. Well, I, I don't know about so uh, South Korea, but I do know for sure, North Korea ain't doing well, but uh, Japan, of course, yes. actually is yeah, um, uh, at the tipping point where I believe their um, their birth rate is now <laughs> under actual there, replacement there level. There was um, a unique thing, and it was funny that because it, this was not a surprise to me, although I will say that it didn't click. So as I was processing tickets ahead of the event, I did see the name Gene Deitch. No, actually, it only says Jean. No, no. Oh, on the on badge. The, on oh, her badge, okay. it says Jean. Yeah. But I see a ticket uh -huh. that comes through that says Jean Deitch, and I think to myself, well, I know who that is. She's a flaming liberal from Peterborough. A former I had forgotten senator. that she was a senator. Yep. I knew she ran for Senate, but I had forgotten that she actually was a senator. And I was like, well, that's unusual. But then I was like, whatever. She paid for a ticket. So more than, you know. Um, so on... Saturday, and I, I misspoke at the event. I said she had a VIP ticket because I really did have in my head that she did. But she didn't. She had a Saturday-only ticket, which was fine. Um, it was funny to watch so many of my friends trying to figure out which one she was. I knew as soon as I saw her I would know who it was. Um, I mean, 
she's created that list. She created a list, the boogeyman list, that's what I like to call it, of, you know, anybody who has anything remotely sane to say about anything. That's the way I talk it up. If you vote it, you know, like, I don't know. If you if you watch free if you watch Man's Talk, you're probably on the list because we're probably evil somehow. So she's got this crazy list that um Porcupine Real Estate, um, they made badges that said, um, you could have one that said, I'm on the list, or I'm a Liberty Ninja, because you right. escaped so, the list. So basically, here's the thing. So maybe like f two or three months ago, this, this list was actually leaked and yes. got caught uh, by some pro-liberty people. And please also remember, if you're not pro-liberty, then you're actually pro-slavery. You know, <laughs> let's just put things in the real context here. If you're making lists about other people, maybe you should think yeah. about that. You know who historically right. makes lists about other people? Uh, fascists Dic yeah. and dictatory people and communists and people who are not on the right side of history. So Jean, uh, bless her heart, made a list of uh, people who are pro-liberty in New Hampshire. And Jean runs an organization called Granite, Granite State, State Matters. Matters which is Not to be confused with Granite State Progress. Progress but it's all, but, you they're know, probably all I, intermingled. Yeah, so. so Because they also, Granite State Progress also has a similar list. Yes. Um, so so she so she made this list and you know and honestly first of all I'm gonna tell it I'm a terrible wife story so we we get the list the list is kind of circulating in our community everyone's looking who's on the list and and I my husband and I's offices are kind of across the corridor from each other and I was like babe I'm on the list maybe like a few hours later I'm cooking in the kitchen and he comes in and he's like hey am I on the list and I'm like no, I didn't even look looked. to see if you're on, on the list because we have separate last names, right? So I forget. I'm cooking. I mean, I wasn't like, right. oh, oh, let me drop everything and go look. Maybe like two or three days later, we're out walking the dog. And we're just casually walking. And Louie looks over and he goes, by the way, <laughs> I'm on the list. And I was like, oh, sorry. Sorry, one, I didn't check. And sorry, two, that I didn't follow up yep. and ask, right? Bad wife. I admit it. All right. So he's super... I think it was important to see that for yeah. me to understand how people were interacting with this list. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm on the list. I've been on all the lists for such a long time, yeah. right? And we have joke about it, but it also hurt my feelings. I cannot lie. So my my mine my, was more focused on the fact that Dan and I got married, which I thought was hysterical. I'm like, and I did say to Jean, well, I give you credit. At least you know, can acknowledge that Dan and I got married. married. I was like, I don't know why that's relevant, but okay. But but my descriptor actually said espouses violence. Yeah. And I was really offended by that because I do a lot of things, but I'm very peace forward because that is actually my right. integral, authentic self. So I know for a fact, like, I don't go around espousing violence. It's not part of my human makeup. Right, so, right. like, the minute I read that, all I felt was angry because it felt so not in sync right. with who I am as a person right. and, and how anyone who knows me knows, right? So I was kind of mad about that, but everyone was like, ah, the list, whatever. So I was like, fine, you know, I'll just roll with everyone else, you know? I was like... So then, uh, at Porcupine Real Estate, our office manager, marketing guru, she's like, hey, can we leverage this list yeah, somehow? something fun. So she came up with this concept and made these little buttons that say you're either I'm on the list or it says I'm a, a Liberty new, ninja. Nin, ninja, right? And then we printed out the list and we had it on our table at the sponsor yeah. area. And people were coming yep. over and like looking up if they are, and they were really excited. Some people were super excited that yep. they weren't on the list, and they're like, there were a lot of those, by the way. <laughs> and uh, and you know, and so it, it was just fun, and it was yeah. a pretty playful. That's what I liked about way. it. It was. It, it was almost like a game, and then then trying people trying to figure out who Gene was. Right. So it was like this, you know, but now, scavenger course, hunt. Not in my wildest dreams would I have thought she would show up at Liberty Forum, right? Because on the one hand, she's making this argument of, oh my God, they're the most terrifying people on earth. Yeah. They're so scary and dangerous. Oh, the extremists, right? Like, And they like to play that fear yeah. factor. They really yeah. do play it. And then for her to show up 
at Liberty Forum surrounded by 300 of these extremists yep. where you told us you were coming seems a little disingenuous, well, which mean means one of those two stories is untrue. And it's probably the one where she didn't put herself in physical danger, right? If she thought we were dangerous, she would not have come. The fact that she came shows and belies the fact that she understands we are not dangerous people. Well, I purposely people. went out of my way because I, I was like, well, how, you know, how am I going to deal with it, you know? And I thought about it, and I thought, well, I want her to be wrong. I want her to think she thought something, and then I, because I was trying to wonder, why would you spend your money to come? I mean, her ticket was probably $129, so it wasn't like a $9 ticket. Right. You know, why would you spend your money and a day to go to this event filled with people that you don't, that you think are bad. So I thought, well, I'm just going to be pleasant as pie, you know, and I did. I was like, oh, hi, and I, did you get your uh, lunch? And, and she told me she went down the hall and went into the wrong lunch event, and there was a dental conference or something, and, <laughs> you know, and she, in fairness, I felt like she played along well. She stayed, she didn't have to eat lunch. So I, I actually did confront her because mm -hmm. everyone was like, I did her and, you know, and I'm getting all these messages, and it's like, what should we do? And I'm like, don't do anything. Like, what do we care, right? right. Um, but then uh, uh, um, uh, Olga Sorens. Olga so, was really worked so, up so over Jean, Well, I think because I Jean was sitting in on the housing panel. Yes. She had already attacked um, Jason Sorens when he was running for office. Yeah. You know, all this stuff. And, and, you know, it's hard. First of all, it is actually hard not to take it personally. I agree. The first or second time you run for office or you step into the public arena, you don't have a thick skin. Which makes sense because you don't realize how toxic that world is until you get into it. Mm -hmm. Then after maybe once or twice, you know, when you start getting, I don't know, dead birds and, you know, your car tires start getting slashed. And, you know, like at some stage you're just like either I'm going to always be in fear or I've got to change my mindset on this. So anyway, so Jean is there. She's doing the housing. I think the Sorenses, because it was their first time running yes. last time, right. I think it felt very personal, yes. right? So Olga was dialed up, right? So she's like, Dude. so I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to go say hi at least. So I did go over and it was, we were at the front of the room and I went over and I was like, hey, you know, and I actually, I think we filmed it. So maybe we'll make a clip or something, but I would say my energy did the following. Yes. I, w I went from, I'm going to sue you <laughs> to, hey, do you want to go for coffee sometime? <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you know, I, I did tell her I was upset about the espousing violence. Yep. And maybe we can actually. Well, that's what I kind of hoped of is that maybe she went home and was like, OK, I don't agree with them, but they weren't. Monsters. Monsters. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I was talking with Greg Moore when they were trying, everybody was trying to figure out who it was. And I, he goes, well, I, maybe she says we're going to say the thing, you know, because nobody What's, knows there is no thing. But right. they are convinced that, you know, we're going to say the thing. Okay, we're, there's no secrets. It's not, there is no hidden agenda, you know, I don't know. It's, it's the, I, it's, it's, and I mean, I didn't think I would talk about the crazy we, person. We are so individualistic, we can't even come up with a group handshake. I had, like, We right. can't come up with a secret handshake. I, <laughs> in, you know, in fairness, Jean at least bought a ticket. The woman I had to deal with, because I was one of the organizers, did not have a ticket and would not leave. Who? But did you know who uh, she was? I know was? now. No, at no. the time I didn't okay. because she didn't have a ticket. Um, and somebody else had talked to her already, trying to like be. A, no, she was filming. She was doing the hip video. Uh -oh. You know, like like that video that you're like, <laughs> what are you doing? What? That that is literally the only reason I think anybody noticed her is she was she was acting weird, out, right. right? So somebody else. Um, went over and was like, hey, did you pick up your badge at the registration table kind of thing? No, I don't have one. Well, you can buy a ticket over there. No, I don't need one. Well, you do. do. And well, no, I'm just here to take pictures and film no. some of the things. And she was like, no. And then I guess at some point she left. And that's the way from this perspective. Um, and then later she came back. So some the person came and the person gave me the heads up. There was this woman. So I went over and, you know, hi. <laughs> I, somebody said you didn't have a ticket, but now I see that you do. So, oh. and I flipped it around and I said, but that's not you, is it? <laughs> she just, <gasps> no, well, sneaky, in retrospect, sneaky. somebody gave her a ticket and I'm like, but that's not how it works. You can't just 
give your ticket to so you know that's or you at least at have least, to identify yourself. Right, go to the right? registration desk or yeah, something. Be because like, hey, how do write I, your real name? How do I know that? Right. right. It was strange, so I said, I you know no, and you're acting unusual, and people have noticed it, and you've been asked, and I think you have to leave now. And <laughs> she, I will tell you if Tammy told me to leave. Well, I and I was, I was, I was purposely not being angry at you know like right. No, no, that's just not how it yeah. is. Um, and I said, you really do? And she kept, then, you know, her, she was coming up. So I'm like, okay, I'm politely asking you to leave. And then at some point she started walking and I followed her and I probably <laughs> was quite close because I'm not a make sure you leave. And then she started yelling, don't touch me and get your back up. And I was just like, okay, just, you can have all the space you want outside of our event. <laughs> and then I had a whole little dialogue with her that, you know, Further apart than this, that someone else now starts uh. taping. So she's taping, and I'm like, I don't understand why you're continuing to tape. And she said, oh, it was for her protection. Yeah, it just went like, uh. it went like this. And now they're on Facebook and stuff saying I'm a racist. <laughs> because you're she happens to be me. black. Uh. So the reason I kicked her out was because she was black. No. And I was like, no, that's not it at all. And actually, the third person who taped that interaction was also black, so. <laughs> Oh my God. It was crazy. So I think my crazier uh, woman was a little crazier than your. And yes. she didn't pay for a ticket. So, yes. so anyways. And, and I have one more uh, story from Liberty Forum that'll kind of tie into some right to know news. Okay. So I think Tammy still. So, so we were all there on Friday, uh, on Thursday, yes. kind of setting up for Liberty Forum. And on Wednesday, morning mm. so it was sunshine week last week which everyone would have missed because we didn't tape last week but sunshine week of course is open government open transparent government you know it's our way of keeping them accountable it's our way of being able to file requests and to see what they're up to to see budgets to see minutes right. to see important stuff um <clears throat> So I, every year I tend to write a letter to the editor or an op-ed talking about uh, these rights, why they're important, all of that. And for the past three years, part of that letter has been, hey, Attorney General of New Hampshire, you guys are failing your duties mm -hmm. to the citizens and residents of our great state because you have not updated this memorandum from 2015 with all the incredibly important and uh, pro-liberty stuff that has happened over the past 14 years, right? So in Wednesday's op-ed that I sent in to the union lady, I wrote this scathing uh, last couple of paragraphs to the attorney general. So we're at Liberty Forum and I'm checking messages on the loo and I'm like, oh goodness, here's one from Brendan McQuaid, right? From, he's the editor of the union leader and I'm like, Oh, okay. And he's like, Carla, we need to change your op-ed, which was listed to be printed tomorrow because the, the, ruling. the attorney general dropped the memo. And I was like, no way. So it was one of those moments they ended up pulling the op-ed. Because it would have been Because it wouldn't have made right, perfectly sense. Right. I mean, I think we could have just watered down the last paragraph or even have made it a thank you, which, yeah. you know, would have been a genuine sentiment. So that Friday morning at 9 a.m., we had Right to Know panels, and then uh, Lori Ortolano did her talk, and then we had Greg Sullivan from the Union Leader, and we kind of got into it. But they dropped this, this yeah, big. memo. This is the new Right to Know memo. It's 156 pages long. It does some of the following things. I haven't read the whole thing yet, but uh, I will come and give us an update maybe while you're in glorious Florida. Yeah. Um, so there have been 27 statutory amendments to the right to know law in okay. the last 14 years. There have been 17 new court decisions, of which I know three or four that are very good for uh, right to know. And so they've kind of revised it. But the biggest thing here is they keep talking about who and what is a public body. Oh. And I think we well, are busy gets... moving into... Some okay, oh, clever well, shenanigans. And where that will have to be up to the legislature. Because, yes. I mean, for those of us, when a lot of times it'll say the state, um, cities, towns, and political subdivisions. It always says that, and people are like, what does that mean? And I'm like, well, that's the school board and the alder, you know, and anything like that. But then you get into these groups like, you know, um, Manchester Matters or right, well, that are quasi, you know, quasi well, it's city these entities. So, so I forget if we talked about it here, but like 
I have such a distinct memory of moving to America and someone explaining to me how lobbying works and me literally looking at them and going, well, everywhere else in the world, we just call that bribery and right. corruption right, right. because it's literally vested interests paying money to try and get their stuff passed. Now, I understand maybe this is like some weird hybrid of capitalism, but everywhere in the world, we call that what it is. It is just rank corruption. You're bribing people to try and get what you want, right? And it's the same with, yeah, it's just, it, 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 the, the NGOs in America have now risen to the level where they are in the rest of the world, which stands for non-governmental organizations, yeah. and it's nonprofits, and you know, yeah. it, it's basically ways now to launder money. Well, and it into, goes back to: is it the name in the, how you filed your paperwork, or is it where you get your funding from? Because if you're funded by taxpayer money, money, you're a you, taxpayer. You should be considered yes. at least to, to some degree. And I actually think I, I would have to go look at the case law, but I want to say that there is some precedences that would say if you're receiving more than 50% of your money, you have to, you disclose. have to, if asked, then you fall under right to know. And if that's the case, I'm pretty sure a lot that of things fall most under that. of the nonprofits in New Hampshire that are kind of doing quasi-governmental work yes. up to and including probably something like the courier because you know they banned people right. who weren't vaccinated from going there but they got really big grants yes. during covid and i'm like mm, i'm gonna you know maybe there's some poking around that needs to be done here so i do think people who are cogent or uh, aware of right to know and sort of how government works and who we should be holding accountable mm -hmm. i think we need to start thinking a little creatively and broadly in New Hampshire and start following the money a little so, better. This has nothing to do with Manchester, but I just found it interesting because it was two articles in the same day paper. Um, so for those who remember, um, Claremont was the ones that were the impetus of the statewide property tax to fund education and all the adequacy and all that craziness, right? That was because Claremont felt they were too poor to educate their kids. Now Claremont, and they didn't like that they had to have such high property taxes to educate their kids because that's when our schools were really dictated. They by still have almost the highest property they did. taxes. So uh, 20, 30 years later, they still haven't rectified this. Still whatever. haven't fixed the problem. So, um, In fact, the Conval School District, which is Kentuckuk, I don't know, Benton, it's a big district. The Conval School District sued the state to say, um, they need to increase, and by increase, I think it was double, um, the state funding for an adequate education um, because it's a only fair. It's the only fair thing to do. And um, Rockingham County Superior Court Judge David Rofe said, yes, you are correct. To which, of course, <laughs> the state said, well, excuse me, Supreme Court, could you chime in? So the Supreme Court has, they didn't say that his decision was reversed, but they said there was no immediate need to implement this this policy because it would have um, cost the it would have increased aid to the public schools by 133 million by April 1st of this year, and that just would have thrown a whole wrench into the state budget and everything. And their answer is, well, there's money in the surplus, so we should spend it. So I thought it was interesting that on one side you've got the Conval School District suing because they're not milking enough money out of taxpayers not in the Conval School District. <laughs> And in the same day's paper, I read that voters in the Conval School District voted not to close schools that are declining to such degree that they don't have enough students. So I'm like, well, there's a disconnect here. So see, those school districts, I, I, while I can appreciate they want to have their local elementary school stay open, I don't blame them, but you don't have any students. You don't have enough students to sustain the cost. Or you do, in which case, your property taxes should cover it because you are being resistant to the realities that you do not have enough big enough student population. Those of us over here in Manchester or in Rye or in Berlin should not have to throw in more money so that you can have your little itty bitty elementary schools. Like you got, you have to decide what's what. You know, you can't. Ha everybody can't have everything because none of it is free. And all these things do is basically steal from your neighbor. Uh, you know, if I, I want the Taj Mahal, but I don't want to pay for the Taj Mahal, well, then the people next to me who don't get to have the Taj Mahal have to pay for the Taj Mahal. Yeah, it's, And that's just not right. But it is interesting how the voters and the district 
went after two it's, completely different things. It's it's almost, I mean, I do think maybe that's part of the reason we're at this tipping point where the world seems a little crazy is because things don't make sense anymore. It's blatantly clear you could take this and this and be like, guys, you got to pick a lane, you know? Right. Um, and, and I think we're seeing that a lot, and then maybe we could use AI as a tool well, to... Well, and I think, I do think the education thing, it, among other things in our society, people are becoming a little bit more aware. I think you, I mean, if there's always, you read articles all the time about fewer and fewer people are watching mainstream media. Right. And fewer, more and more people are disconnecting cable because they see, no longer see value in it because they've come to the real understanding that... It's not true. The news is no longer the truth. <laughs> it really um, isn't. I got a few announcements quickly. Uh, we got the two minute wrap up. Yep. So uh, for folks looking for ways to get involved or want to learn more about how to become a liberty activist in New Hampshire, there's a Grassroots Leadership Academy Level 1 course that is being presented by AFP Foundation New Hampshire. It's starting on March 27th. Uh, they feed you, so there's no yes, reason do. not to do that. Um, it's starting next Wednesday, and so you can find more information at AFP Foundation New Hampshire. I'm pretty sure that'll get it to you. That's Grassroots Leadership Academy. And then uh, I'm going to give a little shout out. I'm teaching a class next Monday. It's a webinar. It is for tokenization real estate investment in New Hampshire. That class will be at 6 o'clock online, and you can find the link if you just Google search it. Google my name or Google Porcupine Real Estate Tokenization. You'll find the link. Sign up. We have over 25 people signed up right. already. And this is going to be the next level stuff in New Hampshire. So get in while you can. Um, so I think today is officially the first day of spring. Today is the 20th? Yeah. Or, yeah, 21st, I believe. Okay, but today's the last it's day soon. of winter, something it's like soon. that. Anyways, it, you know, the weather's been great. Today's a little murky, but um, been great. I am looking forward to it. I am also looking forward to very much sitting my butt on a Florida beach. And I think you deserve nothing. it, Tammy. Um, <laughs> but, you know, get out there, enjoy the, the enjoy the parks and take your animal for a walk or your kids or yourself or whatever it is. Pick up the trash around your neighborhood. Let's do everything we can to pitch in and make our community a better place to live. It takes all of us. That's right. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.